Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Bright Ideas podcast. As always, I am your host, Trent Deersmid, and I'm here to share with you the stories of the today's most successful entrepreneurs and more importantly, to extract uh, all the best golden nuggets that I can during each and every interview so you can take these away and implement them in your business not tomorrow, but ideally today. So my guest on the show today is a fellow by the name of Davis Sixnons, and I think I've pronounced that correctly. And Davis is the CEO of a company called Printful, one of the industry's largest print-on-demand drop shipping businesses with more than 800 employees in and five fulfillment centers in North Carolina, California, Mexico, and Latvia company has fulfilled almost 16 million items since it was launched in 2013. So Davis, thank you very much for making some time. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me. It's uh, great to be on the show. So 16 million items. I assume that you personally handled every single one of those. Uh, yeah, we, I try. I mean, my, my, my face is in, uh, in our apps that our employees use when fulfilling the orders. So I mean, I mean, well, yeah, 16 million items. It's exciting. That's a big number. So let, let's start with a tiny bit about you. Uh, who are you? Well, how did you get into this business? And, uh, and let's begin there. So I'm the CEO and co-founder. So actually I've been since the very beginning. And uh, our business is co-founded with me and two other Latvians. Uh, we come from, a, from Latvia, a small country in the north east of Europe. And uh, we've been involved with other businesses in the internet space. Uh, one of the co-founders actually is most well known for starting the social network in Latvia by taking an idea of friends to the first ever social network that existed. So they started that back when Facebook was started. Mm -hmm. But that business was successful and we used money to invest in other businesses. And you know, uh, my co-founders have started together maybe 100 business ideas over the course of 15 years. And just Printful happens to be the most successful out of uh, all of them. And I got involved with them, initially working on social uh, network about 10 plus years now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of those business ideas were mostly focused on Latvia. And when the last financial crisis happened, we really want to go for the best and biggest market there is in the U.S. And so we started working on various ideas for e-commerce in the United States markets. One of the co-founders moved to Los Angeles. That's where our first fulfillment center uh, for Printful is. And mm -hmm. we started building e-commerce stores and one was built um, on Shopify, uh, which is a well-known platform for anybody in e-commerce who wants to start an online store. Um, and uh, it's still around that gave the inspiration to start Printful later. And the, the business is called Startup Vitamins. We were selling motivational posters uh, with quotes uh, for other businesses. You know, we kind of uh, tackled our, our need because we were a startup company and wanted to have inspirational quotes like you seem to have in your office mm -hmm. and uh, in our co-founder just printed them in his home bought a printer put them in his home in LA and every day he just go down to local USBS center and drop them up and to send it off to the customers and uh, the business was actually going well we kind of tapped in a niche uh, actually we're unlocking some uh, good things around marketing uh, advertising was way cheaper six seven oh that was now eight nine years ago you know ad, yeah. facebook advertising was way cheaper back then and um, we wanted to move beyond posters and we were looking for a print on demand dropshipping company who can fulfill uh t-shirts on demand just like we do posters you really need paper and you print on them and we just couldn't find a company that would do it uh fast in a quality way and would integrate with our backend at the time which was shopify and that is how i we got idea to start uh printful and i've been involved ever since uh was the company as a ceo love it all right so today we are going to talk about for the folks who maybe don't yet have a business um why you think someone looking for we'll call it a side hustle um, should consider a print on demand business. So let's, let's deal with that one first for the entrepreneurs. who don't have a business. They're thinking of like, what should I do? I'd love to start something on the side. I'd love to have it be able to some, become something that maybe could replace my job at some point in time. There's lots of options for them to choose from. 
Why do you think print on demand is worthy of their consideration? Uh, print on demand is great because uh, there's not, uh, not a big upfront investment required from you as an entrepreneur who's starting out to start experimenting, starting selling something. Um, you know, these days Shopify and platforms like that have made it easy to have an e-commerce platform. So if you can pay Shopify $29 or you can just get WooCommerce and pay just for hosting. And that's going to be maybe $10 a month. And then Printful and services like that in print on demand space is entirely free to use. You only pay when you get an order. Um, so we give folks who sign up to us uh, tools like our mockup generator. We assess those designs. We educate them how to find their niche. Um, make some, some sample graphics. They can choose from 220 products. But essentially, they don't have to invest in their own warehouse, hire their own staff, or buy expensive printers. Some of these printers that we're actually using and some of the been buying more recently costs half a million dollars. Something out of reach for anybody who just starting out, but by using print on demand, you get access to that state of the art printing equipment and can compete on an even playing field as other companies who, for instance, do it in house or have been invested. So print on demand is easiest way to start uh, and you can get, a listing up on your store, uh, you know, given that you can design something uh, really within hours. Okay. So let's break this down into some pretty simple steps. Suppose that I am somewhat intrigued about doing print on demand, but I don't have any ideas for products. How do I start getting ideas? Well, you can think start with yourself. I mean, that's how we started Starter Vitamins. We, you know, we were moved into a new office and uh, actually it was the office was previously a, a gallery, uh, um, an art gallery and it's had beautiful wall space and we want to put cool stuff on it. Something that would resonate with us as a startup culture. And mm -hmm. we were just Googling around startup posters and keyboards like that. And we just couldn't find the quotes that they liked and the designs they liked. So we ended up designing our own uh, poster designs and putting up on, on the sale tweak this, uh, you know, our SEO to make sure we rank uh, number one on keyword startup posters, invested in advertising, did other stuff. So uh, a lot of uh, great ideas usually come from your own need. That's one way, way to start. But others uh, ways are you can do your, your research on social media, such as Pinterest, seeing what's popular, what's, uh, what, what, people are pin what people are pinning, or people are sharing on uh, social media such as Instagram okay. uh, but but re really to develop later you need to have some relation to that niche to understand that niche in, in the case of Star Vitamins we understood uh, the potential customer really well because we were that potential customer um, and what we've seen most successful customers of Printful at the time they you know they too are from that community for instance we have a lot of people who sell a lot of the dog related designs and they just really love dogs and consume a lot of dog content so they can create the, you know, the best designs who's going to resonate with people like them. And is all of this stuff going on t-shirts or are you printing on 3d objects or what, what, what is the, uh, what does that look like? We have more than 220 different products, but most of them are different kinds of apparel. Okay. Um, so the apparel is actually the dominant category in e-commerce. Sure. So when we started the Star Vitamins, we started with posters uh, and that what worked well with that niche. But when we looked at just people buying stuff on the internet and we knew that we would have to move into an apparel. So customers really can choose a lot of the products beyond a pot, a paddle, products that sell really well and have continuously sold really well are things like mugs and phone cases and others. So we have products like that too. Okay, so pretty much anybody who's interested in just about anything could, for example, decide they're going to come up with funny t-shirts related to whatever the heck they're interested in, and your company can print good quality stuff on these t-shirts. Okay, well, that's all fine and dandy. So let's say I've got a few ideas uh, that, that I want to put on some t-shirts. There's two, two roadblocks that come to mind. First of all, I'm not a designer, so I don't know how to make the design, number one. 
And then number two, once I've got a design made, how do I test it to make sure that, you know, this is actually worth any time and effort and how long does that take and what does that cost? Right. So yeah, we, uh, there, there's ways to get around it. First of all, uh, most print on demand sites and including printable, they have a designer tool built in it. So simple designs like text based designs, simple uh, ge uh, geometric shapes will be right in the generator. You do not need to hire an external designer um, to get you up and running. You can choose between the fonts we supply. So uh, we have an actual one of the customers uh, was we had from another country nearby Latvia, Estonia it was a uh, designs were about local pride. So their designs were really simple. It has had just a name of a city on a t-shirt in a font, no other illustration beyond that. So they literally, the designs couldn't be more simple mm -hmm. and you didn't uh, need to hire a, you know, a designer for that. And you only needed to work with marketing like influencers and uh, social media marketing and stuff like that. So one, you, you don't overestimate your need to hire an external designer. However, if you need to, uh, we have design services team in place where you can email them and tell me, oh, I'm, I would like to design this cartoon and they're gonna design you a cartoon for a fee. And beyond that, you can use external services where you can hire designers of varying prices, such as Fiverr. Uh, yeah, there's a lot uh, of designers on Fiverr that will make t-shirts for you. Yeah, 99 designs, and there was a company that recently went called Upwork, right? You can hire any kind of specialist and help on Upwork. So, so you, can, you, you can use those uh, to hire somebody. Okay, so coming up with a design is actually not as difficult as you would think if you are not a talented designer. So now how, in terms of testing my idea, because obviously you have to be able, if you're going to run ads to get traffic you've got to think about well what's the clicks going to cost what's the conversion rate how well is my t-shirt going to sell like there's a whole economic equation to figure out whether or not this is going to be a profitable particular product can you uh, shed some light on what you've seen some of your customers doing in terms of running those tests and what rule of thumb numbers people might want to consider in terms of something determining whether the product's going to be viable or not right the, the, the first thing about print event that's good that, you know, when you create a listing, there's no, uh, you know, you only invested time and maybe a little bit of money in design, but beyond that, it didn't cost anything. So you can test a lot of different listings, a lot of different products and designs. Uh, generally, we suggest our customers to charge at least 30% uh, or more uh, market price on top of the print fulls wholesale price. Mm -hmm. uh, and and depending on your product you choose. So if you choose 30% on a sticker, you have very little you know, dollar amount in there in your margin to test sufficiently ads and to actually get somebody buy. But we have products ranging from a price of sticker, which is a couple dollars to more premium products like uh, wall art, the frame wall art. And uh, you can sell those for a hundred dollars or more. So uh, if you choose products like that, you have much bigger dollar amount there to test um, advertising. On, the, on places like Google and Facebook and Instagram, et cetera. So if I were a peripheral customer, I would test my designs out there on those products that cost more because the advertising on fa Facebook has gotten more expensive. Mm -hmm. I could still charge like 30%, maybe 50% or more on top of that. But you know, instead of having a $5 margin, I'm getting like $20 margin in there, mm -hmm. or $30 margin. So you know, you choose products and, you know, look at our product catalog or some of these other companies' product catalog. I would go for the, you know, the highest price products if I were myself. You sell a higher price product and then you add in a lot of uh, lower cost products. You use upselling. There's many apps for that. You know, up, you can upsell with stickers and, and mugs and phone cases that are relatively inexpensive uh, uh, in that one sale. Okay. And to be clear, um, Folks, are they using your platform for their online store or are they getting a Shopify store and then connecting it for fulfillment for fulfillment through to your service so that when they get an order in the Shopify store, your printers are actually printing and shipping the product? Yeah, so the, the you, we don't have a billing platform. You will always need to uh, rely on Shopify or WooCommerce or Wix or BigCommerce or 
or on sale happening on marketplaces that we work with, such as Etsy. But with all of these partners, we have an API integration. That means once the, you sell something, an order comes in on the Shopify's end or Etsy's end, it will ultimately go to our backend. And it's as long as you, you know, paid for the order, it will go into fulfillment. We print, pack, and ship the order. Once we ship it, we provide the tracking number back to the platform. So just Shopify and Etsy, and then that platform sends the tracking link directly to the buyer. Okay. So let's talk about some success stories now within your customer base. Obviously, with the size of your company, you've got lots of customers. So I'd imagine there are plenty of success stories. Which one comes to mind? Uh, we actually have a section on our blog, you know, Printful Success Stories. So you can find a couple ones. Uh, I briefly mentioned the uh, Estonian uh, local pride design store already. I really like them because, again, designs were really simple and they just had small towns uh, names on it. Um, you know, you can look at the United States, thousands of small towns. Yeah. And great thing about that, designs are simple and you can target geo specifically very well using things like Instagram and, oh, yeah. and, uh, and, and Facebook. Uh, so designs like that still seem to work well. And that, uh, particular customer, uh, also used a lot of influencer, uh, marketing. So they looked at people who are influential in those communities and provided them with a discount card. And they said one of the key things, um, uh, was tracking the return on investment of using an influencer or paying them to promote, uh, their apparel brand. Mm -hmm. um, so they started in Estonia, which is a country less than 2 million, even smaller than Latvia, then expanded into Latvia. And I think the most recently they expanded into Spain. Uh, I don't think they're in the U.S. yet because there's probably a competitor like that. So that's one example, really, really simple design. And they, you know, I uh, can't tell like how much they sold, but they were successful. Uh, uh, and there's more uh, to the to her story we actually have a video of uh, a lady that owns uh, that store okay. beyond that uh i like there was a there was a, a customer who uh, was initially started out as i believe posting a social media account with memes about dads you know those dads who wear dad jeans and you know new balances of sneakers and stuff like that and mowing the lawn and stuff like that so there, there was a community uh spreading around that content mm -hmm. and and then he realized that he can sell merchandise the that people would gift the their dads because they were engaging with the content so the father's days came around and they would they would sell um you know dad design that t-shirts with quotes again really simple and mm -hmm. uh, we have hats and embroidery and uh more recently in recent years like dad hats have actually come back into fashion so that dad hats was their designs as their community worked really well and they were able to sell a lot um so that's uh, I, I believe the store name is classic dan uh, dad and then they had you know beyond that they ex uh, expanded into design uh, designs around mothers and moms so really really made sense uh there and then there's um, and the third customer I will highlight is uh, your customers who get, uh, again, passionate about something that happened and get other people resonated. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's a customer called Stoma Stoma. And uh, there was this uh, graphic designer couple, I forgot, it was a, you know, a mother and father, but they had a premature baby. Uh, uh, and by going through the experience, they noticed other people coming into maternity, uh, word with, uh, inspiring quotes on their t-shirts and designs. And they saw, uh, thought, you know, that inspired them to keep going. And they, I think launched a t-shirt design called keep fighting, uh, and we, with, uh, with other, um, you know, to sort of help and inspire other people who might going through the same experience. And. And you have the, you know, then eventually they developed uh, a whole line of designs, just uh, supporting and inspiring parents who had a premature baby. And they posted mm -hmm. content about how to uh, deal with that, you know, other aspects, suggestions for uh, parents like that. And uh, they you know, obviously eventually developed a kid's closing line that were designs of, uh, you know, inspiring 
uh, kids. I think their ch their child had to have a uh, help with a breathing device in his neck, and there there was a lot of cool designs around that idea, and you know, getting parents who are dealing with the you know the the same situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be tough. All right, so. If you, before we wrap up, if you were interviewing yourself on this topic with the idea of just exposing would-be entrepreneurs to this as a, a legitimate business opportunity, because clearly 16 million items is a lot of items, what, is there anything that I haven't asked you, anything we haven't discussed before we wrap up that you think would make the interview just a little bit better? Um. I mean, uh, I, I would just, uh, I, I think you covered the most things. I mean, I mean, the most of the stuff that uh, available, this is really just easily Googleable uh, and finding around and people who was wanting to start something, uh, they just really should just find a time on a evening or just devote a weekend to explore uh, content, uh, Shopify and, and Printful and try it out because Literally, you can you can make the 30 minutes to get the store up and running. You can test some designs really quickly. And by the time weekend is over, hopefully you get a sale. And we have some of those stories already on, mm -hmm. on, on, on our customer base. So devote a weekend, see what happens out of it. If you don't end up selling anything, you learn something new about setting up your store or building a print-on-demand store. And if you sell something, you, you know, might be willing to do at least as a side hustle or maybe even make it the full time. And the thing that I would add to that folks is, is more importantly, when you take your first steps towards pursuing an idea, oftentimes what happens in my, my career and most every entrepreneur's career is a perfect example of this. You discover other ideas as you're digging around trying to be successful with your first idea and then ultimately you may end, up, may end up becoming much more successful with one of those other ideas. But if you don't begin the journey, you never give yourself the opportunity to discover the second or third layer idea, which ultimately, like you heard Davos say early on, they experimented with many, 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 many ideas. And as a part of that journey, this Printful company um, proved to be the, the, the biggest success by a wide, wide margin. So the point is, is, at some point in time, listening to podcasts like this and watching YouTube videos are great, but they'll never expose you to the layer two, layer three, layer four idea, which could be your million dollar idea. So take that time, take that weekend, make the investment and see what comes of it. Oftentimes you will be very surprised. So the company is Printful. The CEO is Davis. Davis, thank you so much for making some time to be on the show. Thanks for having me.